Do you struggle staying consistent with exercise? Maybe you start something and then you stop because you're pulled in all different directions. Maybe you just go all in on your exercise program and then you're all out and you stop working because life gets busy. Well, today I get to health coach Amanda on the show and you're going to see how when we start to get intentional and very clear on what our plan is, is that we find a way to start staying consistent. Before we dive into the episode today, I just want to let you guys know about my Healthy Holidays Challenge coming up for my clients. So not only are they getting all the support that they need that I normally offer, there's going to be this extra bonus of the Structured Challenge. And this way, I can help my clients start to do holidays differently. In this challenge, we're going to be setting weekly intentions. We're going to be talking about how to handle parties, how to handle leftovers, and all these things so that you can get through the holidays feeling good, being able to enjoy a piece of pie, but being able to stick to your intentions in a way that feels good, where you're not putting your health on the back burner. So if you guys want more information about this challenge, set up a free health coaching call with me. We'll just go over your goals, your struggles, and we'll see if this challenge is a fit for you so that you can get through the holidays a lot easier and feeling a lot more confident about yourself. Just check the description down below to set up that free call. Hi friends, and welcome to the Healthy Beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle, mama four and military wife. I have my doctorate in physical therapy and I'm an online personal trainer, health coach, and yoga teacher. Do you wish that you had more energy and could get into shape? Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried a diet before, but it just wasn't sustainable, and now you don't know how to get started. We're gonna look at health holistically here, and most importantly, keep things simple and quick. If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably without long workouts or following strict diets, then you're in the right place. In this podcast, I bring together my expertise with real life strategies. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. All right, so I'm so excited to have Amanda on the podcast today. She's come on and allowing me to coach her so you guys can sort of hear what a coaching session is like and hopefully so you can also learn from her too. So Amanda, tell us a little bit about you, what your life is like, what typical days look like for you. Well, thank you, Michelle, for having me on. So I am a wife and a mama of three. Um, They range in age from 5 to 12, and I'm also a registered nurse. I work in an emergency room, so I only work right now one to two 12-hour shifts a week, so I have definitely different days. If it's a work day, it looks a lot different than a home day, but home day probably looks like most moms, (laughs) busy running around doing uh, kids stuff, getting everybody ready to school, and then uh, since I have a kindergartner, I do kindergarten pickup and then regular pickup for the bigger kids. And then so back and forth a lot to school and back and, um, you know, then getting after school activities and dinner and all that good stuff done. Yeah. So I had you fill out a form before we came on this call today. And I know you had mentioned that exercise has been a struggle and your doctor wants you to start exercising 300 minutes a week consistently. And it's sort of just been a struggle to stay consistent. So tell me a little bit more about that struggle. So I, before I had my third child, so it's been been a while, I was consistently exercising. And then I uh, had an injury in my hip. And so I kind of just stopped exercising, I guess, thinking that I didn't want to hurt myself more. It took a long time to get a diagnosis. And so once I finally did, then they said, okay, well, you can continue to exercise. But that was, I mean, a few years later, I already had my third baby. And then by the time that happened, I just feel like I'll start something. But then, you know, I feel like I get pulled, I guess. Like, mom, you know, mom, I need this or I need that. And then, like I said, that variance of the workday versus a home day, it makes it hard to kind of figure out like a time where I feel like it can be consistent. And I tend to do that whole all or nothing. Like, I I don't know, I kind of feel like it needs to be around the same time for me to be consistent with it, which is probably silly. I probably just need to do it at some time during the day, but I don't know. Yeah, no, that's, 
totally common. And a lot of people, we sort of do that all or nothing. Like we're sort of all in it or we're not and we give up. And there is a lot of this range in between that we can do. And so is your hip injury healed? It's not healed. I just, I, I have lost about 25 pounds over the last year. So the pain is getting better. So I, I feel like I am able to do more and I just kind of have lived with it for so long that I just kind of worked through it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does. And, and so you've noticed that losing weight has helped the hip pain and putting less stress on that joint. So that is something that you have noticed. And is there more weight that you want to lose? Yes. I'd like okay. to lose probably like another 50 pounds. And so if you lose another 50 pounds or close to that, what do you think that's going to do for you? Hopefully we'll have less pain in my hip area that I will be more willing to be more active if that makes sense because without the pain then hopefully I'll be mm-hmm. you know wanting to do more things um, and I I just want to have that I just want to be overall have better health and and but maintain like my bone health and my muscle health while I'm still losing weight so that I can still do all the things that I want to do with my husband and my kids and yeah I, I love that little, you know <laughs> Yeah. And maintaining your bone and muscle health. And something I just want to say for people listening is sometimes when we do that yo-yo dieting and we lose weight really fast, we're going to lose muscle along with it. And that is not what we want to do at all. So we want to make sure that we're losing weight slowly and in a way that's sustainable. So we're not losing muscle mass along the way. And yes, I love how you said more active because when we get stronger, we're also more inclined to be a little more active because it's not as hard. So it has that loop effect. So I love that goal. So we always want to think about if I do this, like what's the gain? So having less pain, being more active, having better health are all important things. So those are important to keep in mind as you're going through this journey. So potentially even writing that on a post-it or something where you're seeing it. So you're keeping that motivation, that real reason in mind while you're doing all this. And so you mentioned how maybe creating the same time or something so that you're staying consistent with this. And I think that can be important, especially when people are getting started. For example, if we're only going to exercise three days a week, it can be easy to forget about it because it's not a routine. So one, we really want to try to make it almost a daily habit so that we are just making it part of our day. We're making it who we are. And I know you had also said that that you want exercise and you want wellness to become part of your routine and be part of who you are. So before we dive into the logistics of it, I want you to tell me a little bit more because I think it's hard, especially as moms, most of us are putting ourselves on the back burner. We have kids that have needs. We have, maybe we have a husband or we have a job. We have a house to keep clean, schedules to manage. We have so many things and it gets so easy to put ourselves on the back burner. So tell me a little bit about how you sort of think you got here, like, and a little bit how you manage that, of managing your family and everything else and what you actually need. I think as far as managing the family, I think definitely I, I am that kind of default parent, if you will, and, and doing the, the daily management of who goes where and what we need and and keeping those running mental lists in my head, like I think a lot of moms do. And so I think that just kind of taking that extra time sometimes feels like that I'm taking away from something else that I'm supposed to be doing, if that makes sense. And I also feel like, I don't know, probably some other moms feel this way too, but I feel like I have like a homing device on me, if that makes sense. So like if I try to get up early and do something for myself, that then the kids get up early. It's like they they know that I'm there and have set an alarm, <laughs> even though they can't actually hear me. They just, it's like they know, oh, she's up. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, thinking about all these different things that you have to manage. So if you feel comfortable, I want you to just sort of like take a deep breath. And I want you to imagine the best version of yourself and what that would look like concerning your health so making this time for exercise so if you're a visualized person just imagining what that would be how that day would run out where this exercise would fit in does anything pop up so I 
think ideally I would either, I could either see like, if I could get my kids to stay in bed, getting up and just getting it done early. So that it's just kind of the first thing I do and then just start my day that way. As they're getting older, it is slightly easier sometimes to sneak up and be able to start doing things. But then I also see like probably a more realistic window of time is after I drop them off at school. So that may be also a better realistic choice. <laughs> yeah. And that also might depend if it's a work day or not too. Right. I, yeah, a little bit in all honesty for me, like I drive an hour to work each way and then I work either 12 or 16 hours. So I, at this point, just kind of write off work days as like, unless I can like get outside on my lunch break and take a quick walk or go walk up and down the stairs, which I've done in the past when I'm at work. I just write that off yeah. as like whatever exercise I get in at work, it, walking around the unit and taking care of people. That's, that's what I do on those days. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so. Yeah. Especially with that long of a drive, my husband was an ER and an ICU nurse for a while. So there are long days. So, so then that's your intention. So it's going to be all these days I'm not working. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure to get my exercise in. And so first you said, get it done early, but also maybe after you drop the kids off, a week, Maybe if it's a weekend, that might vary a little bit too. Yeah. So really setting that intention. So is that something you could either plan out for the week or the night before? Like, hey, I'm going to do this after I drop them off or it needs to happen first thing in the morning. Yeah, I think so. I think I've been trying to kind of look at look at the big picture of my week and seeing like what where things have to get done and then also reevaluating it at night that I just, I just kind of started that over the last week or two, just kind of getting a better idea of like, Hey, how am I going to break up all these things that I need to do throughout the week in yeah. those three or four hours that I have while they're at school to get things done? Yeah. And I think just from personal experience too, and I do it with some of my clients is being able to have a way to organize the rest of your life so that you do have a little more time too, when you have different systems set up for your chores, for your grocery shopping, mm -hmm. then it makes it a little bit easier and it creates a little more time. So let's go with a scenario that after you drop them off, because that's a thing that's going to happen most of the time, five days a week. And we're sort of still towards the beginning of the school year. So if you drop them off, could you make a hard rule that I am going to do 30 minutes of exercise or whatever it is before I do anything else? Yeah, I think I did. Okay, because I think sometimes when we can start to make hard rules or non-negotiables, we don't want to do it about too many things. But when we can start to say, I'm going to do this before I do anything else or whatever it is, then we can start to step into that. And I think it's something you really want to do. So that's another thing. If it's something you really want to do, create this rule so you have that. So if it's on the weekend, what would happen on the weekend? That's a good question. <laughs> I think on the weekend, once I get everybody like up and everybody's had breakfast and I can get them situated with something to do, I think realistically, then I can do my exercise then in the morning also to just feel like it's done. And I feel like once I, when I do do my exercise or when I do have an intention of doing something, I do it, then I feel like, okay, I've accomplished that. And then it feels, you know, it feels good. Like, okay, I've done yeah. that for the day. And so I think that that would be a better way to start my day versus like trying to like, oh, I got to get it in at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think a lot of times when people wait till the end of the day, it doesn't happen because things are going to pop up. Right. That works for some people. But yeah, I think the earlier in the day that you can do it. And also, like you said, and it's also something to keep noticing, tell yourself, because a lot of times we don't tune into the positive, but this makes me feel a lot better. My energy is better. Maybe I feel more confident really noticing what those feelings are when you get that workout done earlier. And you might also see snowballs in the way you're eating and the way you're drinking or the way you're doing other things when you start the day off right with some exercise or maybe that's you know a healthier breakfast it's going to snowball into the rest of the day. So I think that's a great idea. And then let's talk a little bit about, so your doctor wants the goal of 300 minutes of exercise a day. And so I like to differentiate movement from exercise. Mm -hmm. So movement is where we are just moving our body, getting our steps in, going for a walk, 
maybe a slower bike ride exercise is where we are using our muscles so we feel our muscles burning or we're getting our heart rate up. So my guess is your doctor's probably mixing together a little bit of movement and exercise. So you can also think of this for yourself, how you want to do it. So when we think of exercise, do you want to be going for walks, for bike rides? Do you want to be getting strength training in? Maybe a little bit of cardio or HIIT. So tell me, what type of exercise do you want to do? Pretty much a combination. I I like to be able to do some walking in the neighborhood or bike riding because I we do that with the kids, um, take them with us, which is a good way to kind of get get movement in and get some exercise in with the you know taking them to um, which I think is good for them to see and to model for them and then I also want to incorporate some strength training because I think that that like we were talking about bone and muscle health and all that earlier and I think that that's an important way for to be able to maintain those things as as I'm losing and to just help support to support my hip injury too because I feel like strengthening the muscles around that area is also going to be, you know, and strengthening my core muscles are also going to support that long-term. So I think just like a combination of both things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's perfect. And do you have weights or stuff that you can do and strength train at home? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Not super done, like, you know, like setting up necessarily a program myself or whatever. Yeah. what, what exercises I should be doing each time that I'm doing stuff. My husband's been helping me a little bit with that. So that's good. But he's just out there for like an hour and a half. When he's out there. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And after the call, I can give you some more resources and sort of start you up with that too. And so 300 minutes is 60 minutes a day if you're doing it five days a week, because we'll say you're working two of them, which is a lot to jump into. So how would you feel about just starting with 30 minutes a day for those five days? So it would get you to 150. I was kind of thinking something similar just to kind of, you know, start maybe do the 30 minutes in the morning of of something exercise like we were talking about, get my heart rate up and all those things. And then I feel like 30 minutes is more doable to start and working my way up from there. And then if I can take a walk in the evening time with the kids, still incorporating more movement than I have been. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so I love how you differentiate it for yourself. So that morning time is definitely going to be the time where you're getting some exercise in. So muscles burning, heart rate might be up. And then you might get those bonus in the evening. And I think even when you're starting the first week, you might want to start with 15 minutes of strength training for a week or two so that you are building those muscles up and you're not getting super sore. It sort of depends on people's personality, how hard they push themselves. But you do want to start slower when it comes to strength training, even cardio. Like we always want to jump right in, but sort of start a little bit slower. So maybe you might do 15 minutes of strength training and a walk the first week or two. And I think people need permission to have more flexibility because we think things are rigid, but know that there's some flexibility in there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So I would even say this first week, first week or two, starting with 15 minutes of strength training and then doing that extra movement, maybe right after or before that. If you get bonus movement in the evening, that's perfect. And then working up towards that 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So we have that you will drop the kids off and then get it in on the weekends, it will be after breakfast. And that you'll be doing just like we talked about starting with that strength training. And the other thing we didn't talk about was HIT, So high intensity interval training. So it's a way to do cardio. And what I like about HIT is there's a lot more science coming out on it. So sometimes when we're doing cardio for 30, 45, 60 minutes, you burn a lot of calories at once. And sometimes that can slow the metabolism down because it bumps up your hunger hormones you're starving after. But hit when you do it for 10 or 15 minutes. So you do an interval and you get your heart rate up. It can vary. So maybe 20 seconds to one minute. And then you take a rest for probably the same or even longer. And then you alternate that. So that can be a great thing to do in 10 to 15 minutes. So you could even do strength training one day, hit on Tuesday, 
and keep alternating it. So that can be a good option too, if you want to get a little bit of cardio in. And again, HIT you can do at home. I have some workouts um, for my clients that have HIT. So it could be a modified jumping jack or it could be a jumping jack. It could be marching with high knees and waving your arms because anytime you're adding your arms in, your heart rate's gonna go up. And then alternating with that rest, allowing the heart rate to come down. It's not gonna go back to resting heart rate, but it's gonna come down. And then it allows your muscles to restore and build up in there. And then you sort of do that burst again. And again, it's a short amount of time. When I've looked hit workups out on YouTube, it's like people basically doing cardio. I'm like, what are you doing? There is no interval here. So we want to make sure that we have that interval of rest. It's like people just want to like keep working hard. But to get the benefits of hit that they're finding, you need those rest intervals in there. Perfect. Let's end it with... So we've sort of getting more of this clear plan where we sort of set that more of that hard rule, that intention of what you want to do. And the other thing I just want to say is to just have self-compassion. A lot of people are like so hard on themselves when things don't go well, or maybe your kid gets sick and your day is ruined and you don't follow through and then it snowballs into the next day is to just have compassion on yourself if it doesn't go that way and just be willing to start again the next day and to just not give up is that does anything pop up for you as I say that I think that's something I've been working on over the last few months just around eating too so I think that that's as far as like looking at you know each meal independently and thinking you know not like oh I blew the whole day because I ate one thing that you know I probably shouldn't have or more treats than I planned on that week or whatever that the whole week's not ruined it's just the next next day so I'm, I think that kind of goes in line with that and and would go in line with me just continuing to work on that and and being like okay you know that was yesterday and now we're on a new day and let's let's do today so. yeah and I think so many people don't even recognize they have that going on because it's more it's not stuff we usually say verbally but it's going on in the back of our mind and then that changes the way that we take action but when we can start to have more compassion more kindness to ourselves we're actually putting ourselves in a situation to propel us more forward in our health and what we're wanting to do. So perfect. All right. Well, that is all. So I hope that was helpful. And I hope all the listeners here enjoyed this and was able to take something away, maybe that they can relate to and that they want to put into their own health. I hope that you guys found this episode helpful. Hopefully, you were able to relate to Amanda in some way and take away one thing that you can start doing for yourself. If you're still feeling a little stuck, I encourage you to set up a free health coaching call with me. We'll just hop on the phone or on a video call and start chatting through what you're struggling with and come up with this clear plan. Come up with very tangible things that you can start implementing and work through any of those struggles you have. Just check the description down below.